After six years of having ferrets and four years of spending my life around others who have ferrets as well, I've reached the official, highly scientific conclusion that ferrets are the literal embodiment of joy. The way they seem to celebrate life every day is truly inspiring. And so I thought maybe if we explored what joy is and how it works, we could understand better how it is our ferrets came to possess it, and in turn, learn how to get better at possessing it ourselves. The definition of joy is a feeling of great pleasure. But what I find more profound is the distinction between joy and another word we like to use a lot called happiness. I heard somebody else tell me that happiness is based on happenings. It's completely based on the external circumstances of our lives. And therefore, just like the wind, it can come and go. We can't control it. And in that way, happiness is quite fleeting. True joy, on the other hand, is far deeper. Like trees planted along a riverbank, joy has roots that reach deep into water. So the tree itself is not bothered by drought nor storm. The best kind of joy is based on a certain something that isn't really tethered to the comings and goings of this world. Instead, it's something you can hold on to without fear of it ever being yanked away. How else I might put this to words is if happiness is a feeling, then joy must be a knowing. Now, there's two kinds of joy worth talking about when it comes to ferrets. There's the kind we witness in them, and then there's the kind of joy they give us when we witness them experiencing joy. Let's start with the first one. I encourage you to conduct an experiment with me. Present your ferrets with a toy and see how they react. It's absolutely wonderful. If they're like Albert, it's probably really easy to make them go bananas. Then, present them with the package the toy came in instead and see how they react. There's never been a box our ferrets did not thoroughly enjoy. You see, to ferrets, much like cats, it's not just the toys that are for playing, and therefore, it's not just the objects that are intentionally made for their pleasure that can inspire it. Ferrets get to choose what will spark joy in their lives. This philosophy makes life an endless playground, and it's something we could all stand to get a little bit better at. Now finally, for the last stage of this experiment, present your ferrets with nothing at all and see what this does to them. Do you witness an emptiness or a growing sadness, a deep longing in your ferret for something more? No, of course not. I've literally seen Albert in an empty room delight in discovering his own butt. So then maybe it was never about the toy at all, or even the box it came in. I'm telling you, ferrets have this whole joy thing down. And if you continue to observe your pets long enough, you'll see it too. That joy is internal, regardless of what you're able to afford or surround yourself with. The true joy in your heart will always remain unchanged. I asked Channing what he thinks about joy. And he said that he feels that Joy is not really the same as a blind optimism, but it's more like a blind gratitude. And I like that. Now let's talk about the second kind of joy. The joy our ferrets give on to us by being joyful themselves. This is such a beautiful phenomenon. The way I feel when I watch Albert play or look down to see Moose looking right back up at me. My joy comes from their joy but 
It doesn't transfer from them to me. It's not subtracted or split. It's multiplied and the potential is infinite. I find joy in the way my ferrets walk or scamper really. I find joy in the way they sleep, belly up, legs played, free from fear of any kind. I even witness joy in the way they attack feet, begging to play. If my ferret has cause to be happy, then so do I. I had the honor of speaking with 30 or so ferret owners on the phone a couple years back, and I asked them what they loved so very much about their ferrets. You could hear them smile through the phone when I asked that, and I believe without fail, they all mention the word joy in some capacity. So you can see then that ferrets seem to possess this special power to not only grow joy in their own hearts, but sow seeds of joy in the hearts of those around them. Now, why might joy be useful? I'm not even sure if I need to make a case for why we need it these days, but I will. The burden of despair is heavy and one that many of us feel all too often, myself included. Despair feels a lot like walking through sand with weight on your back that's so heavy it should have brought you to your knees a long time ago. Despair also never lets you stop on this endless journey and it doesn't even tell you how much farther you have to go or whether you'll like it when you get to the end. Despair also may leave no physical marks, but it still seems to wound you in a place that's very, very hard to heal. Joy is one of the only respites from all this. Rest from the difficult journey, relief from the pain. And even better still, joy is also a friend that actually lightens the load the rest of the way home. That's because once you know true joy, it literally follows you all the days of your life. And so a question I'll raise is, why might it be a good idea to sow a seed of joy in the deepest part of your heart? Well, because much like the tree we spoke of earlier, with deep roots in the riverbank, a seed started in the deepest recesses of your soul will always remain the furthest from the storms and droughts of our daily lives. And therefore, it's the most likely to flourish. This is also where many people place their faith. I believe honest vulnerability is the only hope any of us have to heal and grow, so I'll share some with you today. Like I said before, I haven't been feeling that well lately. Recently, I met with my doctor and cried. She asked if she could put her hands on me while I wept, and I said yes, and then I just wept harder. I'm scared, and I'm worried, and I'm tired, all the time. To bring me out of this heaviness, my doctor told me to slow my breath. I couldn't. She said, picture a peaceful place. I wouldn't. There's no place on earth that feels safe to me right now. And then she asked me to do something quite different. She said, picture your ferrets hopping through that endless green field. And when a moment ago I'd swear I'd forgotten how to smile, there I was grinning from ear to ear. My circumstances had not changed, but I'd been reminded of a deep joy I witness in my ferrets and in turn the deep joy they give me. And when I was reminded of that seed sown deep in my heart, I could rest and my burden was temporarily lifted. If that is not one of the most powerful superpowers in existence, I don't know what is. You see, joy is not just something that's nice to have, like a new sweater or a meal out. It's actually an essential part of living and to me, I'd say surviving. 
You have bread, you have water, but surely you've heard before that one cannot survive on that alone. There's something more we all need in this life. And today, I'm choosing to call it joy. I think it's time I mention another video I saw recently. The video that actually sparked all the thoughts I've shared with you so far. It was about a woman who died and went to heaven, met God, and was told the purpose of life. And then she was sent back to earth to tell us all about it. The woman in this video spoke to a figure she calls the Christ. He led her to a large pond and from up above a raindrop fell. So small. But down it went. Watch, he said. And she did. And what she saw when the tiny raindrop made contact with the surface was a splash. And then the ripple that radiated from its absence. Don't you see your actions are just like the effect in this pond? He asked. Everything you do not only affects those people, but it affects those who ripple on and further out. The woman then reflected on how she has the ability to touch the lives of people she will never know. This is not something that's unique to this woman. It's an immense gift we all possess. And imagine what would happen if we all chose joy every day like our ferrets do. The effect would ripple out farther than any of us can possibly comprehend. And so if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's that if you're somebody who can genuinely recognize the immense joy your ferret brings you every single day, then you should already know the immense joy you are capable of bringing others.